Hi there, my name is Barbara Dickinson and I'm the Executive Director of the Friends of Hanley Regional Library. Welcome, I'm here with Sean Murphy from 1455, A Place for Writers. The Friends have been around since 1977, supporting the library, Hanley Regional Library system through a variety of ways, any ways the Friends could think of. Raising money is one way through a book sale, but also the Friends have always been involved with programs whether it was movies or musical performances and always respect for the authors and finding a ways to have authors come into the library and talk about their work. So Sean, I'm wondering if you could tell a little bit about yourself and what 1455 is bringing to this community. I would be happy to. So first off, it's great to see you, Barbara. Uh, we were just, we were just saying how uh, in these, you know, uncertain times, uh, technology uh, it can give it and take it, but I, I think we all would agree that being able to interact in real time is good, and it's certainly good to see your face. Um, so I, I am Sean Murphy, and I am the founder and executive director of 1455. We are a nonprofit that uh, is dedicated to advancing the literary arts, uh, and there's a few uh, specific ways that we do this. We are currently working on renovating a property here in historic downtown Winchester with the goal of opening that up to be a year-round writer's retreat, which when it's completed will serve up to 11 writers at a time who all will have their own private space uh, with their own bed, bath, and writing desk, uh, and give them a, a, a focused period where they have time and space to create, but also interact and network with other writers, which uh, those opportunities are scarce outside of academic circles. So there's a value add there um, as a dedicated writing retreat. But we also are very dedicated to uh, providing as much free programming as we can. Um, we, we have been doing this since 2018, and we have eagerly partnered with some people and organizations in and around the town, and, and, the, and even going as far out to DC, but we are based in Winchester. Uh, we have a monthly spoken word at the uh, awesome Hideaway Cafe, as you know, we are delighted to partner with Hanley Library for our monthly author series, uh, where we bring in a different author every month for a reading and conversation. And last summer we had our first annual literary festival, which we plan to do again this summer. Of course, current circumstances are, are complicating things, but I can say that for sure the plan is to hold this, although I think it's going to be a largely, if not entirely virtual event. Well, we've certainly enjoyed the, the uh, monthly series that we've had so far. And I was just gonna ask you how you look at continuing this, whether there'll be some virtual talks, uh, discussions, because it's been, it's been well received. And I know a lot of people have really enjoyed meeting some of the new authors from our region who are new to the contemporary liter literature scene. Yeah, I mean, you know, so, so it's, it's a pure joy for me to provide and, and help kind of facilitate that content. Um, because as, as most writers, I think, would attest, um, you know, it is kind of a 1% proposition. There are the famous authors that have to turn down invitations, and most writers are, are always looking for an opportunity to get in front of potential readers and interact with an audience. So, so there are a myriad opportunities to do that, and, and working with Hanley is, is a great uh, avenue to explore. Of course, uh, the last month or so has certainly kind of forced a lot of us, uh, both in the nonprofit space and even in the business community, to kind of readjust our thinking, um, which is, at least in the short term, meant a lot of virtual programming. So I'm happy to say that we, uh, we leaned into this, this situation. And um, while we had to cancel our April in-person event since the library is closed, I am going to have a Zoom conversation with Justin Aaron, a wonderful poet and friend, and we're going to have the opportunity, you know, via Zoom to have the similar type discussion um, and he'll be able to read some poetry. And I think one of the silver linings that we're exploring, I think both speaking personally, but I think um, in terms of the broader community, artistically and otherwise, is just like this conversation, it's always good to connect, whether it's email or a phone call. But the, these platforms mean that, you know, you can and probably shouldn't try to approximate real interaction with human beings because we all need that. But I, I think it would be the wrong answer to, you know, pull up stakes and say, we'll see you once this is over with. Because I think even once we return to kind of a semi-normal, 
it'll probably be a gradual process and there are aspects of these virtual opportunities that I think um, provide, you know, more uh, ability to communicate and, and, and uh, build that community. Right, to be able to talk and have a question in real time and see the person's face as they're answering is really a, really a blessing and Zoom's offering that. I'm new to Zoom after the last month, but it certainly has helped with my book club as well as conversations with good friends like you, Sean. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it, it, you know, technology, I've, I've actually written a lot in my, in my former life as a tech analyst. Oh. I, I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about and writing about kind of this intersection of technology and culture and entertainment. And certainly uh, no one would probably say they're spending not enough time on their portable devices, but, but at times like this, we can look at the, that silver lining and see how it, it enables us to approximate and in some ways, again, improve on the opportunity to connect. And, and uh, so for, for an organization like mine, um, you know, again, we, we have to assume that at some point we will resume our normally scheduled programming but in the meantime, we absolutely should um, not only make do, but again, explore. Um, maybe there's ways to reach authors that couldn't come to Winchester on a monthly, you know, uh, to, to make a visit. And we can connect with authors, maybe even on a more global level. So I'm excited about the opportunities. But also, I think like most of us, I'm, I'm also eager to be able to see the beloved community in person sooner than later. Right, right. So what else is going on with the 1455 side of your, your project here? So the business and, you know, so day to day, things haven't changed too much because what I've been focused on, you know, the last couple of years is establish, establishing our nonprofit status. And we were very fortunate to find a, an ideal uh, old historic property right in downtown Winchester and we've been actively working to raise the funds and get the architecture plans so that we can renovate that. So um, as, of, as of right now, the buildings are still in a state of disrepair. They've got a lot of personality, but they're going to require some, some work. So we're, we're, we're able to do that in the day-to-day -day of, of planning and, and moving forward with that continues. Um, where my head's been at the last month or so is, is kind of, is hopefully, trying to seamlessly adjust to this virtual reality because I do want, I think not only can we have the literary festival in July, I think it's probably more important than ever. I think people already are, are making it clear that they're hungry for content. I think by July, uh, people are gonna be starving for some good original content. And it, it, it saddens me to see some wonderful festivals that were kind of caught in the crossfire this March, April, May time period they just had to cancel, understandably. I think we had enough advance notice that it would have been a shame if we weren't nimble enough to figure out ways to not only, again, you know, make it work and the show must go on, but I think there are some neat ways to, to, again, bring people into the festival that otherwise wouldn't have been able to get away and, and come to Winchester, although we encourage them to come visit yeah, this great uh, town. Um, you know, and I think going forward, you know, we're all learning as we go. I, I think looking forward next year and in subsequent years, there probably should be a virtual component to some of these events because, again, it, my, my goal, my twin goals for programming have been to make all of it free for people to attend, but also to be genuinely inclusive. And I think that means having a breadth and depth of programming that, that can speak to a lot of different interests, but also make it so that people that may not have the easiest time being there physically are able to take part. So, you know, like I said at the outset, you, you can't, uh, you know, you can't approximate real human interaction, but I think that you can do some interesting things and, and make it bigger and better than certainly than deciding that it's not possible. I think with a little bit of courage right, and, right. and, you know, stubbornness, you can see it through. <laughs> Well, that's great. So I appreciate the time. If people have questions for you, how can they reach you electronically? So I, I encourage everyone that's interested to visit our website. We're at 1455litarts, L-I-T-A-R-T-S dot org. And I am at Sean at 1455litarts.org. There's a ton of information at the website. We've got a lot of, uh, in our blog section, we've archived a lot of the author events that we've done at Hanley. Um, which you will recall uh, a lot of other the pro a lot of other programs we've done. So there's we've already got a good archive of content 
that people can check out. It's all free, um, but a lot of information, including why we're called 1455. Um, I'll leave it as a mystery for now, and you can go to the website and we sure. talk about that. Um, but yeah, I, I would encourage anyone to reach out, and if you're interested in partnering with us or sponsoring us or being involved in any way, I'm always available and would love to chat with you. Great. Thank you, Sean. And if anybody has questions for me, for the Friends of Hanley Regional Library or the library itself, we have a Facebook page and we also have the website. So I encourage you to go there and uh, try to connect with us and see how we can help you. And I am working on Jen Siegel's cookbook I bought when she was here. This is the time I can try some of those great recipes. So thanks so much, Sean, for your Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you on, on behalf of all the authors we've brought in uh, for the work you and your team do. Uh, it would be uh, a lot less enjoyable, a lot less fun and interesting without people like yourself that do so much good work for our community. So I, I sincerely thank you for being an amazing force for good in our community. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sean. All right. Talk Bye -bye. to you soon. Okay. Bye.